Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our co-featured main event of the evening, brought to you by Forum Boxing Incorporated and Caesar's Palace, along with Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. This bout is sanctioned by the Pentacontinental Boxing Union, President Thomas Hogan, Supervisor at Ringside, George Yoshinaga. Along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman, Dr. James Nave, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Luther Mack, and Crispin Rivera. The Executive Director is Mark Ratner. Introducing to you the judges scoring this bout from ringside, Dave Moretti, Al Siciliano, and Lou Tabbitt. And introducing to you the referee in charge, Carlos Padilla. All right, fans, here we go with the co-main event of the evening, the Penta Continental Super Bantamweight Championship, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with blue and red trim and fighting out of St. Louis, Missouri. He weighed in at a ready and even 120 pounds with a record of 19 wins, two losses. He has 16 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently the Penta number five ranked contender. Please welcome the former WBA Bantamweight Champion of the World, Fast Eddie Cook. And his opponent across the ring, the defending champion in this bout on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with green and red trim, hailing from Mexico City, La Ciudad de Mexico. His weight, 122 pounds. His outstanding record is an unblemished 33 wins, no losses, 23 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently the WBC number three ranked bantamweight contender in the world. Tonight, making his first defense of his pentacontinental super bantamweight crown. Please welcome the fighter known as the baby faced assassin, the undefeated Marco Antonio Barrera. Instructions, Carlos Padilla. You were already given instructions earlier. Any question? Okay, let's go. Short and to the point. We'll check the tail of the tape on these two. Cook is 27, Barrera 20. Barrera is two and a half inches taller than Cook. He weighs two pounds more, and he's got four inches in the reach advantage. The rules for Pentacontinental, this title fight, 10-point must system to the winner. Free knockdown rule is in effect. Standing eight count is in effect can't be saved by the bell in any round and only the referee can stop the fight that'd be Carlos Padilla and we're set to go it is scheduled for 12 there's the bell and out they come fast Eddie Cook he's the southpaw nineteen and two with sixteen knockouts against Marco Antonio Barrera thirty three and all and twenty three knockouts Tom, I'm expecting fireworks in this fight. They, this should be could turn into a real slugfest. Fast Eddie Cook said, Marco Antonio won't have to look for me. I'll be right there in his face. Barrera is very calm, cool, and collected, even in press conferences. He seldom talks above a very low, soft monotone. I guess he'd rather let his uh, hands do the talking for him in the ring, eh, Fernando? Yeah, that's the, that's the way he's been since day one. And, uh, you know, you have mentioned that throughout his career. Can you tell me why he's not more of a public figure or is he a public figure in Mexico? He's an uh, up-and-coming star, I think, because he hasn't had the big-name opponents like uh, exactly like uh, Eddie Cook. Well, Cook insists, as long as we brought his name up, that he is the best fighter this kid's ever been in against. And he'll be out to prove that point tonight. Cook's a former WBA Bantamweight champion of the world. He won the title back in 1992 in March as he knocked out Israel Contreras in five rounds, but he lost the title seven months later on a decision to Jorge Julio Elisir. So he found himself a winner and a loser in the same year of the world championship. These guys are wasting little time. They're setting up and teeing off on one another. 
Antonio Barrera is uh, taller by two and a half inches. Cook the southpaw. One of the things that Cook showed in his previous fight was oh, that he, he got he nailed with a good left hand, Fernando. Cook got nailed with the left hand. It's a beautiful shot by Barrera, and Cook is in real difficulty. Big trouble. Big trouble. Carlos Padilla, Cook was between the ropes and unable to fight, and Carlos Padilla stopped it for a second to allow him to get back in. Cook got nailed with a solid left hand. I was saying that he was susceptible, susceptible to the right hand, not so much the left hand, so he still has a good, uh, a good firepower. This is Barrera in his arsenal. Keep in mind that Cook is very dangerous, though, even in trouble here. 13 of his 16 knockout wins have come in the first two rounds. Lead right hand by Barrera, and Cook is in trouble again. Barrera is all over him. And they're going to have a count. Going to call it a knockdown, though Cook standing didn't eight. go to the deck. That's part of the standing eight rule. See, that's the, the right I was talking about. He leaves himself wide open for that right. Barrera knew this. There's the bell. That's the end of round one. And a very impressive round for Marco Antonio Barrera. <laughs> round number two scheduled for 12 from the way Barrera started out. I don't know, but what this is going to be a short evening for him. In, in recent fights when we've seen him, he's had the tendency to kind of, it looks to us, loaf along a little bit. But tonight he's starting out like a man intent on business. Well, he pretty much uh, waits for that opportunity and then goes to work, but he didn't have to wait too long tonight. Joining us at ringside, super middleweight champion Roy Jones Jr. who had a magnificent display of power and speed as he dispatched James Lights Out Tony in what was billed as one of the really great fights of the decade. It didn't turn out that way, not because the two men didn't try, but Jones just had too much for Lights Out. The champions with us. Congratulations. What a great performance. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here with you tonight. Roy, I, did you, you couldn't possibly have thought it would it would be as easy as it turned out to be for you. Well, actually, I didn't think it would be too hard. I just thought in later rounds, maybe he'd try to come on with a little surge of some kind, but it never happened. So it did turn out pretty easy. And I thought it was going to be somewhat like that, but I thought later on he would bring on uh, something to the table for me to really deal with. And I was ready for that, but it never happened. Moving up to 168 was no problem for you. Would you fight there now at that uh, with yeah. your title? Uh, yeah, I'll do that for a little while. I may go back down to 60 uh, for one or two fights too, though, because I still feel like I can make the middleweight division pretty comfortably. But in the near future, I also could be going up to light heavyweight <laughs> division too, so you know, anything from 160 to 175 could be me. Shades of Sugar Ray, both of them. You're going to hold a half a dozen titles or so, Roy? Uh, I don't really care about holding a half a dozen titles, so it's just that uh, I like boxing, I like competition, and I'll go where the competition is. Well, I think that the, the Roy Jones Jr. is the closest thing to Sugar Ray, and I mean the real Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray Robinson, yeah. since we've seen since he retired. Well, thank you very much, and I think that's a very great compliment because Sugar Ray Robinson was, to me, one of the better fighters of all time. Uh, believe it or not, though, my, my most favorite fighter that I ever got a chance to visually view while he was alive was Salvador Sanchez. He fought here. Certainly did. He, fought, he beat Danny Little Red Lopez right in this very ring in this building. That's and right. won the title doing it. Well, he was, won the title from him, then defeated him again. Right. And when I was a kid, I thought, I mean, that's who I basically tried to pet on some of my moves after the call. He never changed his expressions. He always came prepared to fight, and he always was Salvador Sanchez, no matter who he fought. Fast Eddie Jones. Uh, Eddie Cook. Excuse me, Eddie Cook having a little better time of it here in the second round, although Barrera continues the pressure as round two is coming to a close. Scheduled for 12, we'll be back. This is round number three, scheduled for 12. You're watching Fast Eddie Cook. He's in the white trimmed in red and blue. In the multicolored white, red, and green trunks, Marco Antonio Barrera. They're in here at the super bantamweight limit of 122 pounds. 
It's round number three, and they're scheduled for 12. Joining us at ringside also is Roy Jones Jr., the super middleweight champion of the world. A resounding victory, an electrifying one. Great hand and foot speed in his victory over James Lights Out Tony. He's undefeated. And his future very much in front of him. Tom Pereira looks as though he's trying to set Eddie Cook up for another big shot here. And Eddie, is a, who was a guy who was always aggressive and always in your face, uh, said yesterday when we talked to him, he can adjust a little more in the ring, and he's showing a little more style now in this in this round in an attempt to, to be more of a boxer. Well, after that first round, in fact, I thought he might be in danger of going down, maybe even out that first round, as Barrera pretty much had his way with him. I thought Cook uh, put on a pretty good show in round number two. Fought pretty well. Cook had to be very careful because Barrera is a very good puncher, very strong puncher, and um, if he doesn't watch himself, he will find himself in a situation he doesn't want to be in, like right there. Oh, good body shot by Cook, though. I and think. he says he's the toughest fighter and the biggest hitter this kid's ever faced, boy. Now uh, that could be true, but this kid is no slouch. He's a 33 on that record. And uh, that's very difficult, even fighting against guys who are not supposed to be so good. So anytime you see a guy with a record like that, you know he's bringing something to the table. Keep in mind that this is only Cook's second fight in the last two years. And the fight that he had was just a month ago, and he was pressed in that fight. He, uh, he had to work hard to get a 10-round decision against Juan Mendoza at the Forum. Well, he'll be pressed in this fight, too, and he'll be uh, very lucky to come out here with a decision without getting stopped because this guy's going over his shot by Cook. This he landed going... a pretty good right. He caught a left hand just before oh, that. Lands a good left of his own on Barrera's jaw. He's got the power, Cook, to turn it around. Yeah, but Barrera will never let up, and you see his expression never changes. He has strong concentration, and he's into just making Cook work until he gets the way he wants him, then he's going to try to close in on Cook. Yeah, he's uh, very poised. You know, Roy, and that brings me to mind of your fight with uh, with Tony. I was surprised, really, during that fight that you, you didn't take the opportunity. You were winning so easily the way things were going very much your way that you kept your mind in business, and, and you kept uh, your work ethic all the way through. You didn't hot dog and showboat during the fight, really. I mean, you just basically went out there and attended to business. Right, and that's because, you know, when a guy talks about beating me, that makes me very, very interested in going in and seeing what it is he has planned for me. So, uh... I went in to be all business and to win that fight, not to go in and play around much. Back here at Caesars Palace, the sports pavilion, out they come for round number four. Fast Eddie Cook in the white, red, and blue, in the white, red, and green trunks. The baby-faced assassin, the undefeated Marco Antonio Barrera. Eddie Cook looked a lot better at the end of the last round. He landed a couple good combinations, and uh, it looks like it may be a little bit more promising for him. But he still has to be very careful. Indeed he does. Barrera has knocked out 23 guys while winning 33 without a loss. Another guy you're quite familiar with, uh, Vince Phillips, took care of business in our previous bout. Right, Vince looked very good to being laid off for so long. I think he's been off for about a year now. And coming up, oh, good shot. And nice exchange. Cook landing a pretty good shot to the body, and he just did miss hitting Barrera on the point of the chin. I think he still jolted him, though. I think that's probably one of the harder punchers Barrera's taken in his career. You never know by Barrera's facial outlook. He just never smiles, blinks, shows any concern. He's stoic. Oh, big right hand by Cook. Good shot by Cook. And Cook is coming on point now. He's looking a lot better. Just let him doesn't get too careless. But he's backing Barrera up for the first time in this fight, gentlemen. That's very good. That's why you can't underestimate power. The odds makers didn't like Cook's chances four to one. And in that first round, he looked like a, just that big an underdog. But he's making a statement here in round four. Minute 30 remaining in this, the fourth round. The other voice you're hearing, in addition to Rich Murata and Fernando Paramo, is Roy Jones Jr., the super middleweight champion. One of boxing's great fighters and great champions. And thank you. Just going to sit around and rest over the holidays, Roy, and uh, take it yeah, easy? Yeah, I just sit back, play a little basketball, and kind of take it easy. Uh -huh. uh, view my fight, look for mistakes, look for something to get back in the gym and work on. And, um, I'll be back in action. But nothing scheduled definitely for you yet, huh? Not yet. Right, are you, you going to maintain this uh, fiercely independent role that you've 
had as far as not aligning with a promoter uh, necessarily to, to continue to promote you one way or the other? Uh, probably so. I may align with uh, a TV network such as HBO or Showtime or something like that, but I think I'm going to pretty much work independently as a promoter. I think boxing fans hope that you and your father get back together again, Roy. Uh, we're pretty much together now. It's just that uh, the boxing part, it's very hard to do business with your family. Anybody who knows boxing knows that. Oh, Cook just took a bad shot. Yep. And he's trying to tie Barrera up. Indeed. Round four has been a pretty good one so far for Cook, and all of a sudden he finds himself in trouble as the round is coming to a close. Round number five, it's scheduled for 12. Uh, Fast Eddie Cook in the white, trimmed in red and blue. Had a pretty good fifth round, but Marco Antonio Barrera seemed to catch him right at the end of uh, round number four as they're out here now for round number five. Cook here is showing a very strong heart, strong will, and strong uh, sense of determination because he's been hurt bad in this fight. His eyes are starting to swell, one of them with a little blue spot up under, and he's still going like there's nothing wrong with him. So I have to give a guy a lot of credit for fighting a fight like this. Boy, they are teeing off on one another now, Barrera and Cook. Now that's a slugfest we expected, and a behind-the-back punch <laughs> by Eddie Cook. Nice. I like to see stuff like that. He was being creative, you know. He has been creative. <laughs> hey, Roy, you could add that one to your arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Carlos Padilla saw that one. But this guy still, this kid's throwing some strong, tight punches, and he's always dangerous uh, during the fight. So Two minutes not... remaining in round number five. Barrera has Cook against the ropes, backing him up. Oh, that hurt. Sticks that him with that shot. left hand down in the liver. And it seems that Barrera will accept to take punches, so just so that he can also let his. He's smart. He makes Cook work. Then when Cook tries to take off, he uh, works Cook. And uh, he's beating Cook's body right now. He's really taking a toll on Cook. But like I said, Cook shows the heart of a lion. He stays right in there and he goes to war. And I just hope he's careful and not, not hurt by this guy because this guy's throwing some good shots. And I think this is the first time really that Barrera's uh, character and heart in there is being tested tonight because he has eaten some hard shots from Eddie Cook as well. But you can tell that Barrera is ready for this. Uh, Barrera coming into the fight probably did, knew not to take Cook light, lightly, but um, he came prepared for a battle. Well, actually, it looks like both fighters came prepared. Cook hit him with a solid left, and Barrera never even flinched. Caught him flush, and he moved right in and threw punches in response. Barrera is tough to discourage. Looks like a duplicate of Julio Cesar Chavez, almost. He's all over Cook now, backing Eddie up. And Cook trying to fight his way back. Boy, Cook is tough. I Man, told you. he doesn't he want Cook courage, I'll tell you that. He shows the champion's heart. He never gives up. That took a lot out of Burrell. That took a great deal uh, out of Burrell. He took, a, he took at least four shots. Yeah, Cook needs to go to his body a little right now. Cook will do good. Cook coming on here in the close of round five after Barrera covered him oh, with yeah. a barrage of punches. Barrera's kind of tired now. Cook works his body. Cook has something here. There's the bell. That's the end of round number five. We've got a dandy going here. <laughs> the light heavyweight from Ventura, the carpenter from Ventura. Out they come for round number six. Well, you know, I tell you, I just, I was delighted with anticipation when I heard that foreign matchmaker Antonio Curtis had made this match, Tom, because he just figured to be a slugfest, and we got the war in that last round that we expected. Neither man has been down. It looked for all the world like Cook would not come out of the first round. Barrera was on him very quickly, but Cook has, uh, while I don't think he's ahead on anybody's card, has certainly answered and responded to every onslaught Barrera has thrown at him, and they have been considerable. Fast Eddie, former WBA bantamweight champion. Marco Antonio Barrera undefeated 33 and 0. Cook says he's never been hit, Barrera that is, by a guy who hits as hard as I do. Well, a couple of times he has uh, kind of stopped Barrera in his tracks. 
but Marco Antonio just keeps coming on. I think towards the end of the round, it was just basically the, all the work that he did at the beginning of the round. This is uh, on the, in the uh, last round that I'm talking about. Yes. Fast Eddie Cook was born in St. Louis, but he's trained here in Las Vegas and lived here in Las Vegas. So naturally, he has the backing of a lot of fans. And there was a lot of noise in this Caesars Palace Pavilion when he staged that rally at the beginning of last round. Nice solid jab by Barrera. Pretty quiet round for Barrera. Cook forcing whatever action there is. Tom Barrera is having to answer some tough questions that every fighter sooner or later has to answer. You know, he's one, you know, he rarely loses a round in any fight we see him in. And he ha probably hasn't lost too many tonight, but nonetheless, he has tasted the leather and tasted the power of Eddie Cook. And I don't think he liked it. <laughs> Barrero with Cook against the rope, pops that jab at him. Cook covering up, pushes him against the ropes. Wild left hand by Cook. Had good night written all over it. Barrera just watched it whistle by. Well, round six has quickly moved into the books. It's scheduled for 12 this fight. Quick check of the scorecard. Rich Morata says he's got Barrera up by three points after six rounds. Fernando has him up by two after six. We're looking at action in round number seven, Sports Pavilion, Caesars Palace. Fast Eddie Cook in the white, trimmed in red and blue, former Bantamweight champion. The baby-faced assassin, Marco Antonio Barrera. Undefeated, 33-0. and 0. And uh, the talk about Barrera deserves a title shot, but where would you put him? What division? Bantamweight, Super Bantam, what? He claims he could make 118 of the uh, Bantamweight, but uh, I don't remember the last time he did make 118. He used to be the NABF the Super Flyweight champion. And then that's when he started zooming up. He couldn't make that weight limit anymore. On then he woke up one morning and he was 118 <laughs> or 20 pounds. <laughs> Left hand scores for Eddie Cook. And I just, I think I saw a little bit of hesitation on Barrera's part. He started going back, pulling back a little bit. And you would think that it would be Eddie Cook that would be tiring as time uh, progressed. You would think so. All of a sudden, Barrera swings into Southpaw. Now he's back in the orthodox style. Nice body shots by Barrera. Cook comes back answering with some shots of his own. Did you see that little inside work too? Oh yeah. Eddie Cook grabbed the head of Barrera, pulled it down and punched with the other hand. Hit him a couple of uppercut shots. Or Carlos Padilla could step in and break the bend. Half a minute remaining here in round number seven, scheduled for 12. Both fighters in great shape. They seem to be, Fernando. 
As round seven is coming to a close, we'll find out about conditioning. It's scheduled for 10. We'll be back. Taking a moment here, and now the bell brings him out for round number eight. Did I say 10? It's going to go 12 rounds, or is scheduled to. This is the eighth round. Cook got a standing eight count in round number one. It looked very much as though Barrera was going to dispatch him early. But since then, it has been a very, very tough fight for both men. You know, if uh, Cook loses this fight to Barrera, which may very well happen, he'll be the most shocked guy in uh, Las Vegas, I think. When yep. we talked to him yesterday, have you, have you ever heard a more confident kid? And I mean, it didn't seem like phony bravado either. He had all the confidence of a used car salesman, no question about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, Fast Eddie's face certainly shows the effects of some solid shots that have landed. Compliments uh, of Barrera. Eddie couldn't fool the panel on what's my line tomorrow, I can tell you that. <laughs> Barrera, on the other hand, never changes expression. Never. Oh, Barrera thought he got hit low, started to back up, got hit in the head, uh, kind of a butt, and also thought he'd taken a low shot, backed up a little bit, and Cook was all over him. Well, if I was Eddie Cook, that's just the way I do it. I'd try to rough this guy up, turn it into a street ball. Did you see now? Did you see uh, Barrera also waiting for him with a hit? Yeah. A little trickle of blood coming from the nose of Barrera. Well, I think Eddie Cook has proved one thing, gentlemen. He is indeed as tough as anybody Marco Antonio Barrera has fought, and perhaps tougher than anybody else. Oh, yeah, clearly the, clearly the best Barrera's been in with. Cook backs him up. Has him against the ropes, throwing punches. Blood trickling slowly, bit by bit, from the nose of Barrera. As Cook backs him up again. Solid combinations by Cook. Hooks to the body and bring it up to the jaw. A solid left hand by Cook. His best round, Rich Verata, I think. Yes, and Barrera was showing something else we always wondered about. A chin. He's got one. Yep. He's been hit some solid shots to the chin right in this round and hasn't flinched. Oh, he nailed fast Eddie with a right hand and Eddie's in trouble. Cook is in trouble and Barrera's on him. Jumping all over him. Cook goes down. And I think they're going to stop it. Unreal. What a rally by Barrera at his very worst moment in the fight. He was having his toughest round when he nailed Cook with a right hand. And with that punch, why he then opened up the floodgates, a flurry of punches against Cook. And the fight stopped, and Cook's unhappy about it. But I think in point of fact, as we look back, you'll see that Cook was in a lot of trouble and Barrera had hit him a half a dozen shots without answer. I think, Tom, that Cook went down perhaps voluntarily there to try just try to escape and get a few seconds breather from that unbelievable assault and barrage landed by Marco Antonio Barrera. Let's take another look at it. When it seemed as though Barrera was having trouble, bang, that right hand. And from that point on, Rich, look at that barrage of punches. Hard shots, Tom, right on the chin. A little wild right there. Cook, though, couldn't do anything to tie up Barrera, and that was his problem as he went down to one knee, and referee Carlos Padilla stopped it at that point. So the baby-faced assassin turns everything on. Hitting Eddie Cook on time and stopping it in round number eight. That's his 34th without a loss. Jimmy Lennon Jr. has got the official time. Jimmy, if you will. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 31 seconds. In round number eight, the referee in charge, Carlos Padilla, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated and still the pentacontinental super bantamweight champion, Marco Antonio Barrera. <laughs>